The easiest way to understand cross-site scripting is to identify instances of the vulnerability in a running application through the use of dynamic testing, where we send user input to a Django application, just like we would in a QA test. If you are not familiar with cross-site scripting, this vulnerability is a form of HTML injection that boils down to the rendering of user-supplied input back to the browser in an unsafe manner. This allows an attacker to modify the page's JavaScript, HTML, or CSS content to perform some malicious action. Now let's see what a vulnerable instance of cross-site scripting looks like. We will use the search page of django.env, so let's start by searching for an existing project. Pay special attention to the data entered into the search field. You will notice we enter in JavaScript commands and control characters to create an alert box. If any of the affected user input fields fail to properly check for malicious input, this JavaScript will get executed by the browser and we will see an alert box with the number 1. This means the site is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. There are other strings and methods for finding cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, but one of the most obvious ways to identify an instance is through the use of an alert box. When testing any application for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, input JavaScript and HTML control characters to see what is reflected back to the user's browsers. Any instance where these characters are not encoded could be vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Now if we look in the HTML source, we see that the script tags are rendered without any encoding, just as we expected from the alert box behavior. The browser has interpreted our malicious input as application HTML and executed it. So not only does the application fail to validate user input, but it does not output encode any of the user inputted data. Now that we know what cross-site scripting looks like dynamically, let's review the Django source code and fix the underlying bug. The first thing we need to do is to identify the Django template responsible for generating the vulnerable page. This is done through urls.py and views.py. Identifying the vulnerable template is as simple as following the data flow through these files. If you dig into the search.html template, you will notice the use of the safe tag within the template output curly braces when dealing with the queue parameter. It is important to note that the safe tag refers to the source of the outputted content and not the method by which it is output. By adding the safe tag to the curly braces, we are disabling the default output encoding within Django, which leads to the cross-site scripting vulnerability. To expand upon that thought, a quick look on Google for Django and XSS shows a whole section in the Django documentation under Security and Cross-Site Scripting Protection. This section walks through the default template HTML encoding, as well as the various tags used to disable this default, including safe. One thing to note when dealing with untrusted input is that the destination for this content alters the encoding necessary to prevent cross-site scripting attacks. HTML encoding is different from JavaScript encoding, which is different from URL encoding. Make sure you use the correct encoding when dealing with user input. XSS vulnerabilities in Django are usually the result of one of three things. First, user input is not validated and is redisplayed in the application inside of an output tag that disables the default HTML encoding using the safe tag. Otherwise, the unsafe user input could be displayed using a template with auto escape disabled. Finally, the same input could be displayed to a user inside of a context that is not HTML related, such as JavaScript. In the last instance, use the escape.js tag to encode for JavaScript or the URL encode tag for output appended to a URL. To mitigate XSS successfully, you must understand the destination of all output before displaying anything that is possibly malicious to a user. 
We have a couple of options for mitigating the XSS vulnerability in search.html. Our first option is to remove the safe tag. Remove the tag from the vulnerable template and view the output the application generates compared to the initial result. When reloading the affected page, the alert box no longer pops up and the source code shows that the malicious characters are now safely HTML encoded. Our other option here is the use of the URL encode tag. Either way, the application is safe from cross-site scripting in this instance.